My name is Mark Myers. Most people just call me the Burrow Man. I travel the country with my dogs rescuing donkeys from abuse, neglect, abandonment, or sometimes it's just wild burrows that the government doesn't want anymore. My staff helps me care for more than 3,000 donkeys all across the country. Donkey rescue is not what we do, it's who we are. Let's, let's talk about the tracker, tractor accident, or uh, hashtag man versus tractor. Um, I was in a hurry, as I often am. Had, I had to get a 20 donkeys out to Odessa, Texas. But because we have so many construction projects going on all the time, I wanted to get this one trench started with the tractor so I could call the guys when they got to the ranch and tell them what to do. But I'd already had it started so they would see what I meant. Well, I head out, I jump on this tractor, and I had to change it from the hay spear that we pick up the big thousand pound round bells, and I needed to put the digging bucket on it. Well, I uh, had just brought this tractor out from California. We have two tractors that there's not a nickel's worth of difference between them except for the front end loader, the, the arms that raise things up. And I just brought this one on, so I'm not real comfortable with it yet. And it's got a different attachment on how the, thing, the bucket attaches to the front. And it's got this rod that you have to pull out and slip in so it goes through all the holes. Well, when I switched it, I knew it didn't go through all the holes. I knew it didn't go through all the holes. It was my fault. I knew that. Because uh, what you got to do is once you get up in the air, if you give it a little waggle with the stick, it'll click in. But I was in a hurry. So I forgot my bucket wasn't attached. And here I come. I get out there and... Uh, tractor in my trench. So I go forward with the, with the bucket lowered and I scoop me a big old scoop of dirt and I dump it. All right. I put it in reverse, drop the blade on the back, have my hand on the steering wheel, turn to look and out of the corner of my eye I see the mass coming up. And about that time everything went black. Now I don't know if I went all the way unconscious or what but I obviously had my bell rung and I did not know how bad I was hurt. But as I started to become aware of what happened, I realized I couldn't move. And the steering wheel had been smashed down onto my legs so that my legs were completely trapped underneath it. I mean, just flat as an old pancake right on my legs. I knew I was having trouble breathing and I knew my head hurt like you wouldn't believe. But that's all I could really tell. The tractor bucket was no longer at the end of those arms where it's supposed to be, but it's laying right here, right in this, this area right next to me. And fortunately, I had my cell phone right here. And I got my cell phone out, and I called Amy. And I told her, I said, come around, and I'm hurt bad. Um, the day of Mark's accident, the day started with a phone call. Um, Mark had left early for the ranch, and I was still at home. And I got a phone call that was very strange, very garbled, and I knew it was him, but he wasn't saying anything, but I could hear him breathing. And all he said was, I need you, it's bad. And so when you've been married as long as we have, you don't ask questions, you just get up and you go as fast as you can. And um, Mark doesn't, uh, say it's bad. For my benefit, he always tries to make it seem not as bad. So I knew it was bad when he didn't say very much. And I, I said, hold on, I'm coming. Um, I didn't know where he was. I just knew he was on the ranch somewhere. And I called Michelle and said, are you at the ranch? And she said, no. And I said, I need you to turn around right now. Something's bad. Something's really bad. Mark's hurt. I need you to find him. And so we hung up and I left the house as fast as I could and um, it took a really long time to get to the ranch that time. It seemed like it took forever to, to get here. And um, I was about halfway here and he called me again 
and all he said was, uh, it's bad, ambulance, and hung up. So I hauled butt in my little red car, doing 120 miles an hour down the road, and luckily I had saw where he went on the tractor, or the direction he went in, so I kind of knew where he was on the ranch. So I drive out there as fast as I can, and when I get there, the bucket's off to the side of the tractor that's normally lifted up in the air is off to the side of the tractor. And he's just kind of slumped over, so from the back, everything looks good. And I get up to the tractor, and I'm talking to him, and he's, you know, kind of talking back to me, and I get in front of him, and he's just hunched over, and there's just blood everywhere. His head's cut, his ear is barely hanging on. So I call 911 as I'm running to the car to get something to wrap around his head to stop the bleeding, and I found a hoodie in my car. And I'm talking to this lady on 911, and she's trying to get the address and stuff, so I'm telling her where we are and giving her the address. And she's trying to keep me on the phone while I'm trying to hold this on Mark's head and talk to her on the phone. So I kind of get a little upset with the 911 lady, so I just hang up on her, which you're not supposed to do. My recollection of the whole thing is sort of dribs and drabs, because I don't really recall lineal events. I know that Michelle came next to me, said something, and then the next thing I know, she's climbing up over the back of the tractor, wrapping my head. I got out of my truck, and all she said was, blankets, we need more blankets. And so, I, you know, I just didn't really think about it. I just ran back to the truck and grabbed all the blankets and things that I had. And um, she was standing behind him on the tractor with her arms around him, around his head. And she had already put um, what blankets and sweatshirts and things that she had around him. And all I could see was blood dripping off his face. Um, but I grabbed my blankets and I ran over to the tractor and Michelle was just a cool head and it really helped me kind of stay focused and I knew she'd already called the ambulance, so um, it was just a matter of waiting for them to get here. And so I just kept talking to him, you know. And I did what I thought he would do if it was me sitting there and just kept saying, you know, I'm here, they're coming for you, rubbing his hand, just, you know, trying to get some. I didn't know how much he could hear me and I didn't know um, how much he could understand me, you know. It was really hard to tell at that point how bad the damage was. And then at some point after that, I know these great big old EMS and sheriff deputy guys were wrestling trying to get this bucket slid out of the way. And then I think they wrapped my head. And then the next thing, they was trying to get me out of the tractor. and they were trying to pick me up and I'm kind of a big fella, even for big men, I'm still a big fella. So they were having a little trouble. So I told them, I said, you know what? Because I already felt like a damn fool. You got to understand, I've been driving equipment since I was I, in my early teens. I was a contractor. I've driven everything from bulldozers, front end loaders, skip loaders, tractors, forklifts, you name it, I've driven it. So I felt like a damn fool because this was an accident that should have never happened. So I told them, I said, you just get these legs unstuck and I'll take care of the rest. So they helped me get my legs out and pried that steering wheel off and got me to my feet and so I walked over to the stretcher myself. They helped him turn so he could get off the tractor and they had the backboard and they were going to try to slide him off and he stood up. He stood up because Mark Myers is too tough to have somebody help him down off that tractor. Mark is just, he's too tough for his own good. And finding out later all the damage that was done that was one of the first things we thought of is he stood up off of that tractor with all the head trauma and the broken bones and everything that he stood up and it's just still we still can't figure out how he survived it but how he stood up after all of that too that's just my husband he refuses to to require too much help at any time which is kind of frustrating but that's just how he is. And they laid me down on one of them backboards. Whew. Let me tell you, what we found out later was my back 
was broken right down the middle, my ribs and my vertebrae. And land getting strapped to that backboard was, was the most excruciating thing I've ever had. That and the bouncy ass ambulance ride to the hospital. But after reflection on the incident, what happened was somehow this, this stick got pulled back, whether it was by my leg or some freak of nature, the mass came up and that bucket came over the top. Now that bucket weighs about 800 pounds. It's a big, it's not a standard front loader bucket, it's a digging bucket, so it's extra heavy duty. If you're gonna drop one on, you get the extra heavy duty version. You don't wanna hurt the bucket. So, but if you measure the bucket, it doesn't really fit in here in any way that it would have not hit the dash, but just the steering wheel and me. So we haven't figured out the physics on that. But what it did is it hit me in the head. On this side, it knocked my ear off, and I got two skull deep uh, gashes where I actually have green paint on the left side of my head. This side hit this bar right here and split me all the way up like that and took that skin and just peeled her back like an orange, just like that so that I don't have any nerve endings in my head anymore. They're just now starting to grow back. Um, since my arm was turned this way, since I was on the steering wheel, the bucket hit me here, pushed my arm into my chest, and all that force came through my body until it hit this seat, and that's where everything broke. My ribs broke, my, vertebra or, uh, my vertebrae, my collarbone, and those ribs just shredded my lung. That's why I was having a hard time breathing. Um, Mark's injuries were pretty extensive. He had um, several really deep head lacerations, and when I say really deep, I mean you could see his skull. Um, he, his, his left ear, his left ear was not really attached anymore, and I, I later found out that that's one of the reasons why Michelle was holding him the way she was, is because when she got here, she realized that his ear was basically dangling, and so she was trying to hold that on and stop the bleeding. So his injuries were head lacerations, um, basically cut off his ear completely, um, six broken ribs, one dislocated rib, broken vertebrae, punctured lung. Um, I don't know, that's a lot, you know. Collarbone. Collarbone was broken. Collarbone was actually broken clean through um, and it still, still hasn't really healed. So we got to the hospital. Amy was riding with me, talking to me. Um, I was worried about my dogs, but she told me they had that under control. And uh, so we get to the hospital and we do the CAT scans and the x-rays and, and that doctor come in and he says, well, you don't have anything life-threatening, which I thought was pretty good. He said, but we are gonna have to keep you overnight for evaluation. Well, that overnight turned into a week. I think he lied to me intentionally. I think Amy told him that I wasn't going to be an easy patient, so if he didn't want to tell me, I had to be gone a whole week, so 24 hours. And once they had me on a morphine, they had, they had me under control. The main thought that was going through my head is, you know, if he dies, it's on my watch, because I, I, was, I was there. So I was, I was going to do everything in my power not to let him die, because he has a wife and two kids, and, you know, and then I got to thinking, crap, if something happens to Mark, what are the rest of us going to do? I mean, we don't know how to run this place without him. I mean, we could do our best, but there's, there's no way this ranch would be able to carry on without Mark. And you, you know, all that's going through your head and then you're sitting in the emergency room, waiting room, you know, and you're just sitting there. I was sitting there with his two sons because Amy was in and out and, you know, it took a while for them to come back and tell us anything. And then you're thinking, okay, is his neck broke? Is his back broke? Does he have brain damage? I mean, because the gashes on his head were just unreal. I mean, even one of the doctors said he had John Deere green paint on his skull. So, you know, you're thinking, you know, when he, when he does come back or if he does come back, is he going to be the same? You know, what, what all is going to be different? Is he going to recover? Because there for a while he was in a back brace and, you know, the physical part of his job kind of slowed down for a while and we had to 
make do, but you know, we got through it. But the main thing was, you know, what would the ranch do without Mark? Where would we be? And I really didn't know until later how bad the cuts were and how bad his ear was um, until the paramedics got there. And then I realized that if she had saved his life, he would have bled to death. He absolutely, he would have bled to death. Had she not gotten here and just, you know, thinking on her feet, she just went into action and she saved him. Um, it was two and a half hours at least from the time of the accident until they could actually give me morphine for the pain. And that whole two and a half hours I was strapped to that board. And that's because they didn't, until they saw the, the, the results of the x-rays and the CTs and all that business, um, they didn't know what was wrong with how much damage I had, so they couldn't give me anything until they could assess the damage. Um, so I was in the hospital for a week. They wouldn't let me walk. I was in a back brace for almost four months, I think. Um, I spent three months in a recliner. I was on total bed rest for three months, couldn't work. And I still ain't the same. My collarbone's still broken. Uh, I can only spend about six hours a day on my feet before my back gives me a lot of trouble. And then being off my feet for three months, I, I lost a lot of my condition and shape that I was in. So now I'm having to get back into shape, but I can't do any kind of weight lift or anything too strenuous yet. So it's, it's been a long road back. Um, if he hadn't have made it through with all of this, if Mark, if Mark had died, um, if he had died and not, not been here anymore, um, the rescue would never be the same. I don't know, I don't know how I would carry on without him. No, I don't consider myself a hero. I mean, he would have did it for me. We're just, we're family here, so, whew. Brings back memories. Um, I'm just glad he's okay and I was there to do what I could. Please remember that Peaceful Valley is supported entirely through private donations. Please go to our website, donkeyrescue.org, and make a donation. While you're there, get a coffee cup or a t-shirt from the gift shop. Y'all be good, and we'll see you next time. Dogs, let's go.